All right, today I wanted to do an overview of the first omnibus I've ever received, um, ever bought, and that was a Fourth World from Jack Kirby omnibus. So obviously this is a huge massive tomb of a book. I can't even fit it into the camera there. Um, Fourth World Omnibus by Jack Kirby. And back here you get Dark Side. So if you're not familiar with the omnibus format, um, this is one of the larger ones you'll see released by Marvel or DC. It comes in at like 1500 pages. So they do come in skinnier volumes, if you will. But one of the great things about it is that not only does it collect 1500 pages worth of comics in this book, but also the artwork is oversized. So this is your typical trade paperback, if you will, um, that you would receive. It's the same size as a single issue comic book. And you can see in the camera there that the omnibus on both sides, both the, the, the height and the uh, width here is bigger so that the artwork is bigger. So it's kind of blown up, which is something great when you have a, one of the greatest artists of all time, Jack Kirby, supplying the uh, pencils. For you. So <clears throat> here's your dust jacket. They all come with dust jackets. I'll put it on the camera there. And like I showed you, like on the front cover, you have Orion and Dark Side, this awesome battle. And then you get Big Barter on the spine. And you get the awesome Jack Kirby logo there on the top. And then, like I said, Dark Side on the back. And then on the uh, cover here we have this awesome wraparound of Orion's face. I'm going to try to do this carefully without breaking it. And so you have like Orion's face there wrapped around the entire cover. Again the awesome Jack Kirby logo. And then written and drawn and edited by Jack Kirby. Inked by Vince Coletta. So the only thing that Jack Kirby didn't do with the fourth world books was the inking. And that was Vince Coletta who is a longtime Kirby inker. Um, one time he worked with him and probably Joe Sin at the most. But if you're not familiar with the story of the fourth world, so Jack Kirby, when he left Marvel for DC, he went on to um, pretty much have free reign of what he wanted to do with the story. And he had this idea for the fourth world kind of thing. He wanted to take four titles and have them tell this long ongoing story. Um, so the four titles were Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen, Mr. Miracle, the Forever People, and the New Gods. And through those four stories, he told this intertwining um, tale of Dark Side and the High Father, and uh, Mr. Miracle, Big Barda, all these awesome characters that he created for DC. And there's Mr. Miracle. And Jack Kirby, he's just, he's probably one of my favorite artists of all time. I just love, like, some people say his, the, uh, his figure drawing is kind of out of whack because his characters that will have, like, very squarish type figures and, and muscles. But I, I like that. I like that there's a little cartooniness to um, the comic book. I'm, not, I'm a bigger fan of this kind of comic book artwork on the interiors than like an Alex Ross. Alex Ross is a great artist. I'm not denying that, but this is what I more, want more in my comic books. And there's also these great photo collages that he does that Jack Kirby was famous for doing. I mean, he does a lot in the negative zone of actually right here on, on my shot here. This is the negative zone. Um, one of the photo collages that Jack Kirby did. This is all Jack Kirby on the background here. Um, but, so whenever the Fantastic Four would enter the negative zone, he would do these cool photo collage things. It's something he did with DC on his first stint before he even went to Marvel. Um, was his work, and it's just kind of fun and interesting. So in this, right away, we get the first appearance of Darkseid. He appears in a Jimmy Olsen, Superman's pal Jimmy Olsen book. Uh, if, you, if you didn't know, fun little fact. Um, and one interesting thing, too, about his Superman 
the like him drawing him was that DC had a house style of how they wanted Superman to look. So they would, and they didn't like the way Jack Kirby drew him. Because again, Jack Kirby has this very like, very distinct facial um, like, drawings of people. Like you could tell it's Jack Kirby just by looking at it. Apparently DC didn't like the way he drew Superman. He didn't look like the house style. style. So they would literally erase his pencils on the Jack Kirby drawn faces for Superman and redraw them in, which is just, one, it's blasphemous, do you think, to uh, read, <laughs> to redo something that Jack Kirby did, art-wise, thinking that it's not good enough, but also it's just something that's not done today. Like, today, depending on the artist, um, in comic books you'll have different interpretations of what Batman and Superman and Spider-Man look like based on who's drawing them, even with within the same run, the characters might look different. So it's just kind of mind-blowing that back then it was still happening, that they had this house style. So when we get to the Forever people here, this is when it really starts picking up for the New Gods stuff. The Jimmy Olsen book is kind of weird and it does seem out of place to be in this title. But, and there's like a lot of rumors and myths as to far as why Jimmy Olsen was a part of this whole storyline with Jack Kirby. Some people think that Jack Kirby was kind of betting on himself by saying, what's the lowest selling title you have? I'll include that in here and make it one of the best selling titles. Some people say that DC was kind of punishing him or thinking like, there were some people within DC that were thinking, you're not all that you're cracked up to be, let's see what you can do with this title kind of thing. Who knows? I don't know what the answer is as far as why that was involved in here. But Jack Kirby did a, a great job of interspersing it into the rest of the fourth world stuff. And it really picks up when you get to this, like these issues of Mr. Miracle. Um, is when it really starts picking up into all this New God stuff. So then you have Orion of the New Gods telling a story. If you're not familiar, so um, the story was that Darkseid and the High Father were going to war with each other all throughout space and time and they finally met came to a peace a peace offering where they traded sons basically they both had newborn sons and the high father had Orion and um or no no I'm sorry the high father had Mr. Miracle and Darkseid had Orion and then they swapped sons as a peace offering and then they were chosen to raise them so Mr. Miracle was raised by Darkseid and had to go through all the torturous childhood you can imagine being raised by Darkseid would be like. Um, and then he, then Orion was given the better end of the deal, if you, if you will, by being raised by the High Father instead of Darkseid. So he kind of got the, uh, the better end of the, the trade there. And then it goes on from there, as, as you can imagine, when they grow up and... Uh, these planets are at war, they're gonna go to war again, only with an older sons that are, you know, pissed off at the situations that they're in. So Mr. Miracle is also very much, he has this loving relationship with Big Barda. And if you are if you haven't read Mr. Miracle by Tom King and Mitch Garrett, I, I have to highly recommend it. They do a great job of telling the love story between those two. Um, but, I just want to point that out because, point this out because it's been a long-standing thing. Jack Kirby said that he modeled Big Barda off after Roz, his his long wife. Um, they were married for many many years, and so Big Barda is kind of like a uh, Amazonian, you know, very tall and and uh, can kind of hold her own as a as a a woman. So that's, and Mr. Miracle's shorter than her and shorter in stature and Jack Kirby was always going on about how short um, he was in stature. So it's kind of like this couple is kind of Kirby and, and Roz. So it's just a little interesting tidbit there too. So this omnibus is awesome because it collects, and one of the great things about the omnibus format is that it, it collates these stories in order of how they were released. So. Yes, there's four titles within this omnibus. There's, like I said, there's the Forever People, Jimmy Olsen, there's uh, the New Gods, and Mr. Miracle. 
Now, they don't separate them all to where you're reading like all of Jimmy Olsen and then all of Mr. Miracle. They collate them into a way that they were re released on the newsstands because Jack Kirby, like I said, was telling his stories, telling the same story through all four titles. So there was a chronological narrative. So you wouldn't want to read just one title and then just another title because they're all out of place. You want that chronologically. So that's the great thing about, like I said, the omnibus format is that it collates all those for you. So you'll read an issue of Jimmy Olsen and then read an issue of New Gods. So you can get the whole chronological narrative um, within the book, throughout the book. I'm trying to see if they, do not have the cover for that one? Okay. Because the one thing I do like that they collect in this is the covers. I, lo I love when Omnibus, when an Omnibus collects the original cover in here to break up the chapters. Because obviously, like a standard comic book, like 24 ish or 24 pages an issue, and it's kind of great to have those chapter breaks. And also, it's fun to be able to see what the original cover looked like. Because now I feel like I'm reading it as a reader would have back in the 70s, um, if they're collecting these monthly. Some omnibuses you'll see don't have that. Some you'll see have like the Virgin cover, which doesn't have any text or writing on it, um, but they'll still keep the cover in there. I like when it's the original cover, so I'm glad that they did that in this book. Um, let's see if I keep going here. So, the uh, these titles ran for 11 issues each for Forever People, New Gods, and then Mr. Miracle would go on to do a total of 18 issues. And it's been cited as having um, sales was the issue as far as why they all ended. So, but they let Kirby continue on for Mr. Miracle through 18 issues. And then, but he like kind of left off on a, a cliffhanger and never really necessarily got a chance to finish the story. Uh, okay, so this is Mr. Miracle number 17. I'm getting closer here, I think. But then he would go back to Marvel and I think that's when he did like the Eternals. Um, yeah, okay. This is, this is issue 18 of Mr. Miracle. So that's when he did the Eternals, which was kind of, I think, his way of not continuing the New Gods, but, but him tr continuing that kind of storytelling um, of, like, cosmic gods, if you will, um, doing battle. And then he would come back to DC to finish the story. So this is, uh, I believe... Oh, yeah, even in the, the ominous will, will kind of have a like context and explain things to you here. So that's the end of Mr. Miracle 18. And then it says right here, he says goodbye to the fourth world characters for over a decade. Then in 1984, new, a new reprint miniseries appeared that collected all 11 issues of the New Gods. Its sixth and final issue featured all new entitled Even Gods Must Die. That bridged Kirby's previous fourth world stories with the epic finale of this cosmic saga. The Hunger Dogs. So that's collected in here. If you're familiar with uh, the first way, the, the first time that um, DC released the fourth world stuff was in these four separate, uh, they, I think they called them omnibuses, but I don't know what the trim size was. I don't know if it was um, oversized like this, but they're four separate books, which is obviously smaller than this, might be easier to handle, ha easier to read um, with the book in your lap or what have you. The only issue is that did not include the rest of this book so if you're collecting those you're gonna miss out on this whole thing which includes the conclusion to the new guy's storyline that Jack Kirby did when he came back to DC in the mid 80s um, with the Hunger Gods Hun Hunger Dog storyline so I'm assuming that these are the covers oh yeah so it says right here they reprinted 11 issues of New Gods and re-released them these are the covers for those B issues so it's kind of fun that you get to see if people you know in 84 wanted to read it instead of going back issue diving for new god stuff they they reprinted them that's what they look like um so this is the final analysis even gods must die so this is when kirby comes back it's kind of interesting to uh look at this because you mean you could compare kirby's art when he just spanning 10 years i mean this was the mid 70s and then he comes back 10 years later to draw this is kind of cool. And I think that it takes up the full page here because this is something that Marvel and DC would both do back then rather than have um, 
the like, I don't know what we call that, the uh, panel border, if you will. They would take up the artwork on the full page. And that's something you see in modern comics all the time now. But back then it was only, they did it for like special occasions for graphic novels kind of thing. So like if you read like Thanos Quest from Jim Starlin and Ron Lim, it, it would do that. Um, so it's kind of cool to see this artwork oversized because now it's even more oversized Kirby, Kirby artwork than we saw earlier in the book. So this is the, okay, so that's the Even Gods Must Die. This is when the Hunger Dogs graphic novel starts. So this is the, uh, it was released as a graphic novel. Um, I guess graphic novel number four. I wonder, I know Marvel did that, did this, I'm, I'm assuming DC did it too, where they would, graphic novel was like their, it was a special thing they'd come out with. So, the, and they would number them and such, like Marvel graphic novel number one and Marvel graphic novel number two, even though the stories weren't really necessarily consecutive. Like one of them was like the death of Captain Marvel um, and another one was uh, God Loves, Man Kills from X-Men. Like, they necessarily didn't coincide with each other, but it was just, like, their special thing. So I'm assuming that's what that is. Um, someone can correct me in the comments if, if I'm wrong there. But I know that this wasn't the fourth installment of Hunger Dogs. But this was Hunger Dogs, Jack Kirby, um, his graphic novel. Stories and Pencils by Jack Kirby... Inks and Lettering by uh, D. Bruce Berry. Oh, that's a guy I'm becoming more familiar with. And then Ink Reconstruction and Coloring by Greg uh, Theakistan, Bill Ray, Editor Joe Orlando, Associate Nicola Cutie, and Art. So this is what I want to know. Cover by Jack Kirby and Greg Theakistan. So I wonder if he did the, the painting colors. Because, like, obviously, yeah, this looks like Jack Kirby art, but it's, like, kind of painted... So I wonder if he did the coloring for that. But it also looks like this was recolored for modern purposes. Also, which is something that a lot of people will take. Oh, that's pretty awesome looking. Take a. This is really cool looking. That they'll take a issue with is that Marvel and DC will sometimes go back and recolor a lot of these old stories to update the colors. Because back then, when these stories were first coming out, they were using like the CMKY four color process. So they didn't have as many options as we do in modern times for colors and different shades of colors and those kinds of things. And for me personally, give or take, like as long as the modern coloring still has the heart of what the original artists were going for back then, I don't mind it. Now, if they completely recolor something and change it completely, or I feel like it changes the reason why the art was so good in the first place, then I have an issue with it. But this doesn't look bad to me. Your office is obviously definitely looks modern. I almost want to buy a Hunger Dogs um, graphic novel to do a color comparison. But oh, that's an awesome photo collage. And then back here we have some we have like pro the mother box profiles of all the characters that Jack Kirby would write up. Um, yeah, Big Bear, Big Barda. It's kind of like the Marvel uh, encyclopedia, but for fourth world stuff. So Dark Side, the Deep Six, Doctor Bedlam. So these are all characters that Jack Kirby created for this. Forger, he's a he's a favorite of mine. The Female Furies. Funky Flashman, this is interesting. So Funky Flashman, if you don't know, was a parody of Stan Lee. So obviously this doesn't look like what you think of modern Stan Lee, but if you go back to the 70s, it was very much what Stan Lee looked like. So Jack Kirby is obviously a little disgruntled, I think even to his death, um, about how much credit Stan Lee took, or even like even the perceived credit. That's, that it seemed like that Jack Kirby that Stan Lee would have over like the original Marvel universe, like the Fantastic Four, you know, Spider-Man, Hulk, all those kinds of things. And so when he went to DC, he created this funky Flashman character. He's like a used car salesman, basically, is his personality. And he's very much um, a parody of Stan Lee. 
Gorius Godfrey, Granny Goodness. So this is interesting too because if you're not a huge comic book fan, but you're a fan of the movies coming out, they are coming out the New Gods movie, and it's coming out I think in 2021 I want to say, and it's going to be directed by um I forget her name, but the lady that did the Central Park Five documentary on Netflix, great documentary. So she's directing it, which is awesome. Oh, um, Duvernay, I think is her last name. I can't think of her first name. But Tom King, who wrote, like I said, the Mr. Miracle comic book that I love, my favorite comic book of last year, he is, he was doing the writing on it. So I'm expecting that book, or that movie to be really, really good. I can't wait to see it because it includes all of this great Jack Kirby goodness of the things that he, the characters that he created. And... Um, Steppenwolf, who did show up in the, I think, the Justice League movie recently. But, and here's some concept drawings of, so this is another great thing about omnibuses is they always include back matter, or they will, like, have stuff that you maybe have never seen before. Um, so this is, like, pinup art that he did, or, hey, there's a picture of Jack Kirby as a self-portrait. Um... Pin up art or like even like pencils of art so you can see like what it looked like before the inks and the colors went on there which is always fun to look at um kind of shows you like the process of of what they went through when they're drawing oh here's some more pencils this is awesome and jack kirby was like prolific for being able to like pump out title after title and monthly books like doing all this drawing for all these titles i think if I remember correctly, I think all four titles were coming out monthly. So he was doing basically an entire issue of a comic book a week when it comes to the drawing and the writing, which is just insane to me because typically, like in modern times, you have a whole team. You have a writer, an inker, um, like pencils, color, editor, letter, um, and they're all working together to put one book out a month. Um, so you have one guy doing everything besides the, the inking, because like I said, Vince Coletta did the inks. But he did the colors, the pencils, he wrote the stories. It's coming out with a, like, an insane, this insane output um, of stories. So that's one of the reasons why this, I made this my first omnibus, was because I, I just love that idea that Jack Kirby took, left Marvel, and kind of wanted to prove himself, and say like, listen, I had a bigger hand in those stories from Marvel than people are giving me credit for. Let me show you by coming out with awesome characters and awesome ideas. And I think there's even a great um, interview in the Comic Journal with Gary Groth uh, and Jack Kirby, where Jack Kirby cites like his kind of proof in the pudding of as to why he was more responsible than Stan Lee with creating those characters from Marvel was the saying that I came up with great characters before Marvel, like or before Stan Lee. Like, he created Captain America, had some great, like, war stories and that kind of thing. And then Stanley comes, I create a lot more characters with him. And then after Stanley, you know, after I cut ties with him, I created more great characters. But Stan Lee, what did he do before I came around and after I came around? You know, so take that as you will. I, my, I personally, with the Jack Kirby Stanley debate, I think it's more of a Lennon McCartney thing, like a John Lennon, Paul McCartney. I think singularly they were both great john lennon and paul mccartney stanley jack kirby but together they kind of created magic and what they like the beatles would not have been what they were without both uh lennon and mccartney just as much as the original marvel universe would not be as great as it was without um kirby dicko and stanley all working together so that's the fourth world omnibus it's one of my favorite books i have my first omnibus i bought and it's a great representation of why the omnibus format is is so great so thanks for watching uh, please give a like to this video please subscribe as i put out more comic book content and um leave comments below as far as your experience with jack kirby goes your experience with the fourth world if you own this omnibus or if this made you want to buy it i'd love to hear any of those things and uh, yeah so thanks for watching